You may be seated. Friends and family members, we are assembled here in the presence of God to join this man and this woman in marriage. Marriage is an institution that has been established by God, regulated by His commandments, and blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ. It is to be held in honor among all men. Let us therefore reverently remember that God has established and sanctified marriage for the welfare and the happiness of mankind. Our Savior has declared that a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. By his apostles, he has instructed those who enter into this relation to cherish mutual esteem and love, to bear with each other's infirmities and weaknesses, to comfort each other in sickness, trouble, and sorrow, to provide for each other and for their household, to pray for and to encourage one another in all of the things of God, and to live together as heirs of the grace of life. Cody, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife? to live after her in God's commandments and the holy estate of marriage? And will you love her, honor and cherish her so long as you both shall live? I will. And Claire, will you have this man to be your wedded husband, to live with him after God's commandments in the holy estate of marriage? Will you love him, honor and obey him so long as you both shall live? Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. Yeah. Great. Thank you, we will now have a scripture reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 13. Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, it is not provoked, it does not take into account a wrong suffered, it does not rejoice in unrighteousness, unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But if there are gifts of prophecy, they will be done away. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away. For we know in part and prophecy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, and reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, and then face to face, now I know in part. But then I will know fully, just as I also have been fully known. But now faith, hope, love abide in these three, but the greatest of these is love. Amen. Also a reading from Genesis chapter 2. It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make for him a helper that is fit for him. Now out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock, to the birds of the heavens, to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. And the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, the two shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, 
and we're not ashamed. Cody and Claire, you made it. <laughs> You're here, and right now it's not raining. <laughs> Listen, this is an incredible moment, an incredible moment that you'll remember for the rest of your life, that you are entering into the closest possible relationship between two human beings, a relationship that is tighter in its oneness and design than the relationship of parents, a relationship to siblings, to even friends and others. There's no human relationship quite like marriage. Uh, no human relationship surpasses its oneness. At the very least, this is why we are wondering at marriage and the beauty and the wonder of this moment together. You even feel it the first few days where you're falling in love right? Your feet are sort of hovering a little bit above the earth, and all you can think of is that other, that beloved. Everything, it seems, is put on hold, and everything is in the background, and we know that love has been found. Adam must have known that, that day that he first laid his eyes on Eve. In Genesis chapter 2, Adam had just named all of the animals, and we're told that none of them were fit for him. And so God uh, made him go into a divine sleep and performed a divine surgery, opening him up and from a rib, from his very bone, from his very flesh, made for him a helper fit for him. And then God comes to Adam and he says to him, listen, I know you've named all of the animals, but well, there's this one more that I've created while you were asleep. I'm really interested in what you're going to call her. I'm really interested in what you're going to think about her. And maybe Adam, even a little bit drowsy from that sleep, lays his eyes on Eve, she who would become his wife. And the first human speech that we ever see in the Bible is about a man speaking about a woman whom God himself, almost like the father of the bride, has brought to Adam. And appropriately, you know what Adam does? He doesn't just speak, he springs into poetry. I mean, before Shakespeare, there was Adam. And he says, at last, bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman. He is overwhelmed at her wonder and at her beauty, the perfection of what it is that God has made for him. But as we know, that wonder and that beauty in that moment, well, it matures. It matures into a day that's like this one, a day where two who have fallen in love decide to give their lives away to one another. See, that's the nature of love. Love can't just wonder. It needs commitment. It needs a lifelong commitment. It wants to hold the other for the rest of your life. You see, that's the nature of Genesis 2 when it says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. You two are leaving behind, as it were, the life that you have known previously. And not just, as it were, forming a new life, but making a whole new life together. A beautifully new, wonderful life in Christ. And that's why this life is forged by a vow a vow that you're making together today, a commitment that you're, as it were, backing each other up into a prison cell <laughs> and you're closing the gate and throwing away the key and you're saying the best that God has in store for the two of us is to love the boundaries of this commitment and to get to know each other in a deeper and more profound way over the rest of our lives. The reason that's so important and why God doesn't let us just try on marriage ahead of time, but to make the commitment to be together forever, is He wants your relationship to be a picture of the way that He loves us. You see, He didn't just say, well, let me see if I like them for a little while, and then maybe I'll stick around. He committed Himself to us, and He will never forsake us. And in His commitment to us, he is calling you two together to it today to be a picture of that. That all of us here who are watching you make these vows can watch you throughout the rest of your life live into those vows and show us the beauty and the love of Christ for his church. 
And so there's really only two things I want to tell you as we close this moment in the service. Two instructions that I hope you'll keep the rest of your life. The first is this. Give your life away to one another. Give your life away to one another. As you might imagine, this is a precious gift that the Lord has given to you. And it comes with a tremendous cost that you must give your life away to the other. Uh, that cost will feel at times like loss, especially uh, in moments not quite like this one, where you're in the four walls of your home and not real happy with each other. That's probably going to happen. Believe it or not, there's going to be times of trial. There will be times of trouble. And there are times where marriage will feel like loss. Keep giving yourself away to the other. Keep doing it. Because in the picture that we are called to live into, there is a cross. That's part of the commitment. There will be sacrifice. There will be difficulty in the midst of love. But know this, that in giving yourself away and in the cross bearing that that will be at times, there's a resurrection on the other end of it. Give yourself away to one another. And the second is like unto it. Receive the life of the other. Receive the life of the other, the gift that they are. That's right, it's not just giving away, it's also receiving. On the other end of that sacrifice is a precious gift, the life of the other that's being given to you. It's why in the vows we say to have and to hold. To have and to hold. That my beloved is mine and I am my beloved's. Now listen, you can't receive the life of the other if you're not willing to give up your own life to the other. And so don't hold on. Release and then embrace the other. And what happens is this beautiful mystery that God calls one flesh, a union between a husband and a wife. And it's why in Ephesians chapter 5, when the Apostle Paul is talking about marriage, at the end of it he says, I'm not really talking about marriage. I'm, I'm actually talking about Christ and His church. I'm talking about a God who came and gave His life away. He came a long distance. He left His family in heaven. And He came a long distance to pursue for Himself a bride, a bride that is His people. And on the cross, his commitment was, he got down on one knee and he was saying to us, I want to make you my own for the rest of your life and all of eternity. And in the resurrection, he achieved that for us. And one day he's coming back. Mm. And this is why when the scripture says, in Matthew 22, that there won't be marriage in heaven, won't be giving of husbands and wives in, in heaven. And a lot of the husband and wives who've enjoyed wonderful marriages go, <laughs> that sounds terrible. But what we're actually reading there is the fact that heaven and marriage are one because all of heaven will be a divine marriage. We, the bride, the church, will be robed in a glorious righteousness as stunning as this dress is, and it is stunning. The robes that we will have, the, right, the righteousness of Jesus on the day of His return, well will be so much grander than anything we've ever seen. And so give your life away to one another and receive the life of the other and look to Christ and His love for the church every step of the way and God will take care of the rest. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, as you are turned already and facing one another, let's move to the pledging of these marriage vows together in light of the glorious gospel that we've just spoken about. Cody, I'm going to start with you. Please repeat after me. I, Cody. I, Cody. Take you, Claire. Take you, Claire. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. And Claire, if you would please repeat after me. I Claire. I Claire. Take you, Cody. Take you, Cody. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. And I do promise and covenant. And I do promise and covenant. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful wife. To be your loving and faithful wife. 
in sickness and in health, in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, as long as we both shall live. Cody, what token do you give of this covenant? A ring. Wonderful. You can place it there on Claire's finger. You got the right hand. That's exciting. Wonderful. <laughs> yes. You're on the right track. <laughs> Cody, if you would repeat after me by holding her ring there. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Claire, what token do you give of this covenant? A ring. Wonderful. And Claire, if you would repeat after me. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, as these two have now committed their lives to one another, having already committed their lives individually to you, I would pray that you would consecrate this marriage with every blessing of the heavenly places. That as they experience joys, they will be doubled in the presence of the other and in the spirit. And that the sorrows and the troubles of life will be halved as they together carry each other's burdens all the way to you. Would you put now a hedge of protection around them? And would you grant to them all that they will need for life and for godliness? And may the richness and the oneness that is ours in Christ be in every way pictured in their marriage. For your name's sake and for the glory of Jesus the Savior. We pray this in his holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, by virtue of the authority committed to me by the Church of Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you Cody and Claire, husband and wife, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Cody, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you both now and forever. Amen. You may turn and face everyone. Family and friends, it is my distinct privilege to introduce to you for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Piat. <laughs> Thank you.